Hello there, I'm Black Bright and I am doing my roundup um, for the day, even though it kind of covers a couple of days. Um, but it's just news that I come across and then I put my two, two cents in and yeah, that's basically it. So if it's the first time you're passing through, you're welcome to click the thumbs up, the thumbs down. You're welcome to like, you're welcome to share and all that kind of stuff. You're welcome to talk with my subscribers. And new subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing and for existing subscribers. Thank you very much for commenting and sending me emails and that kind of stuff. Anyway, um, I wanted to let you know that Richard Branson, he's shoving his money in the British, in a safe haven in the British um, West Indies. All right for some, isn't it? We're all left behind when this country goes tits up and he's in a position where he can take his money and put it in the British Virgin Isles. He is one of those men that made some brilliant decisions growing up. Seriously brilliant decisions. And he lived for 14 years in the British West Indies. So it's not like anybody can go and just think, oh, well, I'm going to open up an account in the British West Indies. I'm sure you have to live there. You probably need a dual passport or something in order to do that. Anyway, that's my first bit of news. So Richard Branson shifts ownership of Virgin Galactic shares to tax haven in the British Virgin Islands. I then wondered um, whether or not the British Virgin Islands had any coronavirus, because I'm thinking to myself, well, supposedly he shoves it all the way over there, and then all of a sudden there's an influx of coronavirus over there. But apparently there's only one coronavirus case, and there are no um, deaths. Same same statistics for the US, just one coronavirus. Um, and so the British Virgin Islands, for those who don't know, are the eastern islands of Gorda, Tortola, Jos van Dijk and Anigeda. And the US Virgin Islands, which are the western islands of St. Thomas, St. John and St. Croix. So Richard Branson was able to shift 900 million which is only part of his 1.1 billion stake in Virgin Galactic Holdings to somewhere it is going to be safe. Well, while the rest of us, if our money goes tits up, we have to wait goodness knows how long for the Federal Reserve to refund us up to 85,000, if any of you have got 85,000. But in the meantime, it means that you're going to be out of pocket. So he's lucky, he's in a position he can shift his and a lot of rich people, that's probably what they're doing from now. They can see that what is happening. And I guess with the Americans, they'll be shifting their money to the US Virgin Islands. Um, but yeah, it doesn't look pretty when you get news to say that people are shoving their money somewhere else and leaving us all here to carry the load. Anyway, on a different subject. Driving non-essentially could void your insurance. So say, for example, you're driving, um, you decide, OK, I'm going to go and look for my friend. That is not considered essential. Now, supposing during that journey, which is beyond the non-specified parameter that you can drive, and the police stop you and they say, where are you going, sir or madam? And you say, oh, well, I was just going to see a friend. And they say, well, I'm sorry, that is not an essential journey. I'm afraid I'm going to have to report you to your travel insurance. And then you're going to have to pay an expensive replacement. And God forbid you get in an accident, you're going to have to pay the damages. So be careful. Extremely careful. They get you left, right and centre. My stupid old phone. Anyway, um, so on Sunday, the 6th of April, on Monday, the 6th of April, drivers are warned that making non-essential journeys can void their car insurance. That means their damages won't be covered if you have an accident, which is what I just said. Apparently, use of public transport has dropped, but number of car journeys has risen. So if it is found that the police stop, I've just said that, I'm not going to repeat that. I write these notes for myself and then I kind of remember. I do it to jog my memory. According to The Sun, one woman was fined £800 for having no good reason to be at a train station. I cannot understand why a woman would be charged, fined £800. I thought the fine was 30 
And then if you breached it, you get another 30 and so on until 960. How can one woman be fined £800? There has to be something more to that. And I'm going to have to look it up. I meant to look it up and then I got distracted. And so now I'm doing my video. I'm not going to look it up now. But anyway, another man was fined £60 for driving 100 miles to see his lover. Oh, well, he's £60 out of pocket, isn't he? So um, there doesn't seem to be any consistency in the, emer in the emer emergency laws, even though that's what the emergency laws claim. They're doing it for consistency, because I don't understand how one woman is going to pay £800 and another man is going to pay 60 It doesn't make no sense. Using your vehicle to visit friends, family or more than one essential journey a day could also breach your insurance policy. And remember, you're going to say to yourself, so how the hell are they going to know how many times I go out the house? How are they going to know if I'm going to see my friend? How they know the drones? Remember the drones. They're monitoring you. They ain't doing nothing about it yet, you know. Slowly but surely, these people ain't easy. They're, because it's such a shock what's happening. This is my opinion. It's such a shock what's happening. They're giving you a little blight. So for now, they're saying, okay, you can go out and exercise. You can exercise once a day. You can go and get your essential items. But when they are ready to enforce a proper, proper lockdown, which is what they will do eventually, you won't be able to go out on the street. And the thing is, people are taking advantage of it because they're thinking to this. Because number one, I still think, even though people say the, uh, the directions are clear, I still don't think they're clear. And I don't understand. The police um, were filmed moving on a woman who was lying on the grass by herself. She wasn't, she wasn't in close proximity to anyone, more than six feet away, but they still moved her on. Why? Because she's not exercising. She is that is non essential. You can't be in a park sunbathing. That is not what this is about. The whole point of allowing people to exercise is because they're confined in the house in the house and that exercise is considered essential for your health and well being. And what is happening? People are misconstruing that. And they're thinking, okay, people can go out walking, therefore I can do this. It means we can go out. And as long as I self-isolate, well, not self-isolate, as long as I have a perimeter around me, yeah, I should be okay, but you're not. That's not how it works. And because it's not that clear, I still don't think it's 100% clear, people are getting caught out. And depending on how nice a policeman is, depends on the repercussions of your actions. Anyway, also, I should have said this when, with the other vehicle. Yeah, well, I'm still on vehicles anyway. You know, um, with the MOT and um, six months, um, you don't have to worry about it for six months. But suppose you have an accident and it's a result of you not having your MOT and the MOT, had you had it, would have detected a fault you are still going to be liable according to the insurers, even though it's the government who said that MOT is going to be deferred. If you have an MOT-related accident, you are responsible. I thought I'd throw that one in there to make you feel better. Now, we've got people who are on the street and they're being told to move on. And I, I've always said to people I'm talking to on my my videos stay in your yard stay at home because as far as i was concerned you'd be safe at home but that's not the case let me show you something Now, they're not showing you that. 
as they're going in, that is taken afterwards. They're, they're telling us now that the reason that they've done that is because they've got crack cocaine to justify them breaking down the door and going in and in during a lockdown. So, I, I, I'm just so shocked. But let me just read my notes because otherwise I'll go off. 650 suspects arrested while in their homes. Police break through front doors of apartment buildings. The police have taken advantage of the fact that people are more likely to be at home now than ever before to raid homes and make arrests. My concern now is if they're removing thousands from prisons because of the coronavirus to take the pressure off of prison staff, where are they detaining these 650 suspects? You know, it's concerning because they have told us that they've got these detention centres spread out over the UK. And then remember we had that thing about Alfred's plan where, you know, that sounded a bit, um, you know, the thing that that book that that guy wrote talking about they're going to be shipping off people and putting them in all these detention centres all over the place and just leaving them you know there's no there's no limitation it's not like prison when you're in prison you know you're doing five years ten years whatever you can be placed in these detention centres indefinitely you've allowed that the police are allowed to do that under emergency laws if they believe you've got the coronavirus or you are, you know, because of this situation where anyone can get infected, it's like, um, it's like a leper's yard, really. That's the only way I can describe it. They don't want you mingling with anyone else because they don't know whether or not you've got it. But I, it's not clear where they're putting these people. That's what I would like to know. They're not saying they're arresting them and putting them in the same prisons that they're, trying, they're throwing people out of. So I don't know where they're putting them. Like I said, I wonder how many people are going missing. Anyway, there was no media coverage on it except for that. That's BBC. Uh, BBC. Yeah, that's BBC. So if you put it, if you put BBC or if you've just put 650 um, suspects arrested, it will come up and you'll get a better vision of that video. There was actually three, but I think one got deleted for some reason. So um, what else? Apparently those arrests, when they found all those drugs, it was made under Operation Scepter. That's according to the BBC video and the writing across the screen. But Operation Scepter was a week-long targeted approach across 44 forces in England and Wales aimed at tackling knife crime that ran until the 17th of March 2019, over a year ago. So how can they be using Operation Scepter for this? To justify breaking into people's homes and picking up all that cocaine? I don't know. It doesn't make no sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. Um, emergency police, the emergency powers give the police powers to detain anyone they believe has the virus. And um, I've already said that. Yeah, I've already said that. So according to um, gov.uk, Operation Scepter was an intensified action on knife crime, including targeted shop and stop and searches, weapon sweeps, weapon sweeps, test test purchases. Let me read that again. I'm just going all over the place, and my mouth is lubricated. Okay, so according to gov.uk, Operation Scepter was an intensified action on knife crime, including targeted stop and searches. Weapon sweeps, test purchases of knives from retailers, and the use of surrender bins. 
that was meant to conclude over a year ago. <clears throat> Even so, the government website inciting their power says nothing about breaking into homes in the way we have just witnessed. So I think, I think something's getting twisted. Something is not right. Either the police are not being trained properly. They, they, I think, you know, they've been given these powers and I think they've never had these powers, so much power before. I think they've gone bloody crazy. And the thing is, is that during these emergency operations, like I said before, people lose their civil rights. And if it really becomes like martial law, you definitely lose your civil rights. You don't have no liberty at all. So, yeah, I don't understand how Operation Scepter comes in. They, they need to give it another name if they're making those raids during the lockdown. There has to be another name for it. But something similar happened in Auckland, Auckland New Zealand because somebody filmed several officers using excessive force to restrain two people on the balcony of their home. So, that is all I'm going to say about that. To mask or unmask, that is the question. Who WHO now says that masks will not prevent healthy people from getting the coronavirus. I agree. But it may help those who have symptoms, those who are asymptomatic and those who are going through the incubation period from spreading it to others. And since the latter two categories may not know what they're carrying, the vi that they're carrying the virus, the cry for many to wear masks is so that carriers can't inadvertently pass it on. Now, as, as you know, yesterday I was talking about... <clears throat> two people coming into the office I was occupying in order to be away from everybody. And I got an email to say, I'm really sorry, you know, that I came into the office and I did sanitise the table and I did sanitise the doors and blah, blah, blah. And I did explain to her, I said, you know, I'm sorry that if you felt uncomfortable because I needed my distance. And when you're in a confined space, you're better off being in an open plan office than be in a confined space where the door is shut and you've got three people in it in my in my estimation or in my the way I'm thinking of it so I just explained to her look you know the new statistics blacks are more likely to die from the coronavirus people of certain ages are more likely to die from the coronavirus I feel vulnerable and I don't wish to make her uncomfortable but I need to be in a space where there's more than six feet between me and you. So she accepted that. She said she'll leave me alone. She's so sweet. But yeah, it, it, the thing is, it's, people think it's about them. But I think everybody reacts to this situation differently. We all have our own personal concerns about why we behave in the way we do. Some people feel as though they need to protect themselves more than others. Some people aren't even bothered. But I think, I don't think uh, you can minimise the anxiety it can make you feel in certain circumstances. And I know I can actually feel anxiety when people start coming in that office and start asking me all kinds of stupid questions. Because I'm like, listen, I'll come out to you where we're in a wider space. So please just nicely. Can you stand over there? I'll be out and I'll talk to you in a moment. So that's just the way I deal with it. But like I said, you know, there are people who really aren't bothered, really not bothered. So I'm paranoid. So I admit it. So with Boris Johnson, he's in good spirits and breathing without a ventilator. And he they've confirmed he does not have pneumonia. Um... But I, but this is why I think there's an argument for the masks, because I'm sure that if he, with this coronavirus going on, I'm sure if he had detected somebody sniffling or sneezing or coughing, he would have kept their distance. So obviously, whoever passed the coronavirus onto him was not showing symptoms. And that is my point. Why? There's an argument for wearing masks because now 
he's got it. He doesn't know where he got it from. And it's obviously because the other person wasn't wearing a mask or was asymptomatic or was in the incubation period. So now we hear that Boris Johnson's chief advisor, Dominic Cummings, he's showing symptoms. Apparently, I heard he, that he was running down the street or something when he heard that Boris Johnson had got the coronavirus. He must have been petrified. Michael Gove and his family have claimed that they're showing symptoms. And I'm just thinking to myself, what is this about? Is it about something, you know, an excuse not to have a government? So the whole country can just go mad. I mean, it's just, the timing is just, it's just, I, I, I just cannot fathom. What would happen, though, seriously, if the whole, you know, like Boris and all of his people in that, in that, all of his aides or whatever they call them, in 10 Downing Street, they all go down. But how is the country run? I'll tell you something. It doesn't look good. And you know the worst thing is, you know, all of the unfair emergency laws have already been passed. Just before he gets the virus. Why couldn't they have not been passed? Why couldn't he have got the virus? Why couldn't he have got the virus first? And then these emergency laws had to be um, placed on hold. But oh no, these emergency laws that give the police and the army and everybody power for two years have all been signed off. And then Boris Johnson goes sick. He sits back and watches it all play out. That's what it's going to look like because I can't see who is going to be governing the country if that is if that's what happens. Anyway, let's get on to something a bit more. Well, it's not even upbeat. WhatsApp. They're imposing a new limit on forwarding. You know, we used to be able to um, forward onto about 20 people and then last year it went down to five. Well, now you can only forward to one. I don't, I don't even bother. I've actually taken my WhatsApp off because, you know, especially now, you have to be so careful. People send you stuff. You're not responsible. Well, you shouldn't be responsible for what people tell you. But the thing with WhatsApp, it, all, it automatically downloads on your phone. And if what they're sending you is ominous, and I mean, you know, they're talking about all this 5G and people is sharing 5G um all this stuff about 5G and blah, 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 and you could get, you could be done for that and done for that. I said, you know what? I can't be asked. I'm not downloading WhatsApp because I can't be responsible for what people send me because I remember watching a, um, a video last year and this woman, somebody had sent her something of a child being abused and she said she didn't open it on WhatsApp, but she, she was a police officer. But she lost her job because it was on her phone. So what I'm saying is, is that with WhatsApp, I don't like WhatsApp because even if you don't download, if even if you don't download it, it can still download once you open up that chat. And you can, and the thing also with WhatsApp, you get um, chats from all and sundry. You don't even have to know half of the people. Now, supposing one of those people that's sending you a chat has the bloody coronavirus, you know the PHE can call you and then they don't know when last you saw them. They don't know if you if you know them or when last you saw, you've seen them. But they can say, oh, this person is in your contacts. Um, you know that person. We don't know if you've been in contact with that person. So anyway, we're going to take you off and you, you have to be tested. I can't afford all of that. I don't know half of the people in my contacts. You know what I mean? Most of them, they're business um, contacts. Like I said, DJs, publishers, goodness knows what, schools. And then somebody in there is going to be sending me a WhatsApp or something. And I'm going to be pulled in because they've decided to send me something I don't even know about. 
forget it. I don't want WhatsApp. So they can keep their one forwarding text. I don't want to know. Anybody who wants to contact me, they can, and they can't do it. They can't send me videos and um, pictures on my messages because it won't accept it. So put it on Facebook. At least if it's on Facebook, you know that it's been approved by that forum or that platform. And you can direct me to Facebook if you want. I'm not even on Facebook that much either. I'm just so bloody fed up with it all. But anyway, so that is WhatsApp. So Facebook owned WhatsApp seeks to slow down the dissemination of fake news. So if a user receives a frequently forwarded message, one that has been forwarded more than five times under the new regulations, they will only be able to send it on to a single chat at a time. So I don't know how they'll know whether or not it's been forwarded to five times, but I'd imagine that if they can only send it once, they know it's been forwarded before for five times. I mean, but actually, they could say it's been forwarded for five times and it hasn't. They can just restrict it to once and that's it. Well, you think they've got time to be working out who sent it five times and who sent it this time? They ain't got time to do all of that. They might as well just say, look, we're limiting it to one chat. You can only forward it to one chat. And you know what's sad about that? You know, at Christmas, that's a time you kind of, you don't want to be sending to every single person. But Christmas is the one time, a new year, that I actually send out um, those greetings to a lot of people. Do you think I've got time now to do them one by one? I don't. So... That's the sad thing about it. That's the only thing I would miss it for because it really had its advantage for that. But since that's not working, we have to look for alternatives, won't we? So what else have we got here? Slow but sure wins the race. What's this about? You've, you've had two weeks now to get used to the temporary lockdown. It hasn't been bad, has it? You have been able to go outside and exercise, walk in the park, drive essential distances for shopping. So the grooming has done its work for the proper lockdown. The seriousness of the coronavirus means that, according to Matt Hancock, health secretary in The Telegraph yesterday, that all outside exercise will be banned if people continue to ignore social distancing rules. You know that when they say it's going to be banned, they add that bit on about ignoring. You know it's going to happen. The irony, well, I've already said that about the woman. Um, she was on her own and the police moved her on. So there are two issues here. Is it about social distancing, which means technically that is what the woman was doing, which she was. She was so social distancing. She didn't have anybody around her. Or is it about isolating, which is something totally different? So the message being told to the public should be about isolating, not social distancing, because social distancing is what that woman was doing in the park and she still got moved on. So um, let me see. RAF military aircraft lands in Luton. They've got this big old military aircraft. Apparently, people were really concerned about it and getting all excited. And apparently, it's taking advantage of the quiet runway. And it's for training purposes. This no idea. One big old, what's it called? The RAF Globemaster. Flew into Luton Airport, apparently. That was yesterday. Nationwide boss takes a sizable pay cut to show solidarity. According to The Independent yesterday, nation boss John Garner has decided to reduce his salary and pension by a fifth to show solidarity during COVID-19, which represents £228,000. That's a fifth of his salary. So that is that. So I'm not going to go too much into that. And last but not least, on a lighter note, Jamaica is hosting virtual parties. They are putting on virtual digital dance parties around the world. This way they can comply with social distancing while entertaining the masses. 
The Jamaican Tourist Board started the Escape to Jamaica series on the 3rd of April at 9 p.m. with Jamaica's DJ ZJ Sparks hosting the party live from Kingston. It is intended that a series of dance parties will go live on a weekly basis. I'd imagine that there will be some competition and a fight for audiences, but we will have to see. They also intend to put on live food and yoga programs. So I don't know if, um, I guess it'd be like YouTube and you can just put it on your TV for people who can sync their phone to their television screen. I would imagine that they can, that's how it would happen. And so you can have the Jamaican vibe in your, in, in your living room. Sounds pretty good. So hydro hydroxychloroquine, a cure for the coronavirus, Dr. Hahn, FDA speaking at the Trump at the Trump um, Corona Task Force um, briefing at the White House on the fourth of April said um, there is a cure. It is a cure. Dr. Fauci spoke out about the drug a week ago. So we do not know. It's still being tested. Yeah, I think that's it really. What's that? Yeah, it's still being tested. So apparently it is meant to be a um it's good for it's supposed to be good for the coronavirus, but it's not being tested. So even while they're saying it's a cure, we can't use it. So I don't even know why they're saying it. So that's it for now, folks. I hope you found that roundup interesting. And that's all until another day. Have a wonderful evening. Keep safe and social distance. Remember the NHS. Save lives. Stay home.